Great. Hi. Uh, so today I'm going to tell you about network error logging, or NEL as we call it. Um, NEL gives uh, web operators, web service operators, uh, visibility into problems that uh, network reliability problems that the users of those service experience. It. Um, this is work that I've done with uh, a lot of uh, current and former colleagues at Google. Um, in this talk, I'm going to go through what NEL is um, and how it works, uh, share a few experiences we've had using it um, since 2014, um, and uh, talk about some things you may face if you, uh, if you decide to try to use it to monitor your own service. So uh, if you're a web service operator, you're obviously you're going to have a web server. Um, and uh, let's suppose that uh, a user of your service issues a request to you, um, and your server returns a 500, which means that your, service, your server was unable to fulfill that request, and it's, it's telling you it can't do that. Um, how would you go about detecting this? Um, well, what you would do is you would look in your web server request log. And this is a, this is a log that the server writes out, and it says, you know, for every request I got, what did I, what did I do with it? And you'd see, OK, you have some 500. Um, and you'd identify that, and you'd set up some alerting that say, OK, when there's a spike in 500s, I should, I should do something. I should email somebody, something like that. Um, and that's pretty easy to do, because you're looking for a big spike in errors. Normally, there shouldn't be any, and then you're going to look for when there's a big spike. But what happens if there's no entry in this log? Um, this can happen for a bunch of different reasons. Um, a few of them are your, your DNS configuration may be broken, um, such that, or, uh, such that uh, uh, the user's unable to resolve your domain, or, uh, or you're, they're getting back an IP address that isn't the IP address of your service, it's some other IP address. Um, uh, a router in the middle of the internet may be misrouting your traffic, dropping it, sending it somewhere it shouldn't. Uh, if you're using a CDN, uh, the CDN may, may return an error. Um, and even though this is your traffic has made it its way to a web server, it's not your web server, so you might not actually have uh, the logs for this. So in all these cases, your users, they've, they've made requests to your service, to your web server, but your web server doesn't know about them. Uh, the request never made it there. And so what the problem that you're faced with is that you have to try to determine that a problem has happened by looking for a dip. Uh, in your traffic, in, your, in the total volume of traffic that you're serving. Um, and what we found is that this is much, much harder than looking for a spike in errors. Um, because for, for various reasons, um, you know, things like holidays and weekends can throw this off. Um, and then additionally, it just may be the case that like, a, a very small slice of users are having this problem. Um, the typical solution to this problem uh, is that you actually try to find these errors using um, what's called a prober. Uh, you, have a, you have a prober that sits out somewhere in the internet, and it actually sends requests to your service um, on a schedule or something. Um, and, and then you look and you see, did those requests work? And if they didn't, then you fire an alert. And there's a bunch of problems with this. Um, one is that uh, these probers typically have kind of poor coverage. Like, you're not able to get them in every autonomous system that you would want them to be in. Um, and then they may not be representative of the behavior of your, of your users, right? Um, they're not going to hit every single URL that your users are hitting, necessarily. So this is where, where network error logging, or NEL, comes in. Um, so uh, we go back to our original example. We have our users. They're making requests that are not making it to the web server. Um, and what we do is we have an, a, an agent in the web browser that is going to send back a report about the fact that the, that, that request didn't work. And it's going to send it back over an alternate path uh, so that hopefully it actually makes it back to what we call a collector. Uh, and it can tell the, the service operator that something bad happened. And I'll go over more about what this alternate path looks like um, uh, later in the talk. And so effectively, what this is going to do is it's going to transform it back from, instead of having to look for dips in, in a graph, you're now going to be looking for a spike in reports that Nell is sending you, um, or properties of those reports. Um, so we, we actually introduced this uh, in, in Chrome back in uh, 2014, and have been using it ever since then to monitor availability, uh, reliability of, of all of Google's domains. Um, and uh, we've released it for third parties to use. Anybody can now use this um, since, since 2018. Uh, and I'll explain more about how, <laughs> how anybody can use this. Um, and this is a, a draft specification with the W3C Web Performance Working Group. So I've talked a bit about what NEL is. I'm going to go into detail now on how it works. Uh, and then, as I said before, I'll share some experiences we've had and some things you may face um, yourself if you try to use this. 
Um, so we go back to our picture here of, of, of how Nell works. Um, and we're going to address three main questions here. One is, uh, how, how do you actually activate Nell? If you're a web service operator, how do you say, OK, I want to get Nell reports now? Um, Second, of, uh, second is, uh, is how do we ensure that, that the users can actually reach these collectors, given that they're experiencing reliability problems, we need to make sure they can still reach a collector. And third, how do we do this in a way that still preserves privacy um, of, of, of the users? So step one uh, for anybody who wants to use Nell is that they're going to have to make a request to your web server. And your web server is going to have to respond to them successfully. Um, they're going to have to have one successful response. Um, and in that response, you're going to contain, that response is going to contain a, a few HTTP headers, which are going to instruct the browser to activate Nell for future requests to that, to that origin. Um, and these are what those headers look like. Um, it's OK if you can't really read them. Uh, the, the, the key point here um, is that one of the things that these headers contain is a list of URLs that these are the, these are the collectors that you should try to send Nell reports to. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit more about what those URLs might be. Um, so what properties might you want to have? So let's, let's say, for example, you want to be able to detect the, the IP address of your service has become unreachable. Um, well, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to host this collector on a different server IP address. right? Um, similarly, if you want to be able to detect that your domain name is not working right now, you're going to need to host the collector on a different domain. Um, you're probably sensing a pattern here. Uh, if you want to detect that your autonomous system is being hijacked, you need to host the collector in a different AS. Um, similarly, for your, if you're using a CDN, you need to have a different CDN or not use a CDN at all. Um, but there might be some you know, problems, last mile problems, for example, that like, there is no other. You can't, you can't do it in another place. Um, and so for those problems, we just say, well, that's a type of problem we're not going to be able, Nell is not going to be able to detect. And that's, that's OK. Um, so the upshot here is that you must, your collectors need to be hosted in places that are a different failure domain from the place where your, your main web service is being, is being hosted. So after you've sent, after the user has successfully made a request to your, to your, uh, to your web service um, and has received these headers and it's turned on Nell, um, it's later going to go um, and it's going to make a request and you know, it might not work. And at that point, the browser is going to generate this report and it's going to send it off. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to go through that list of collectors. You, you can specify multiple of them, and they might have different failure domains. It's going to try all of them. Uh, it's going to just keep trying them until, until it finds one that works. Um, and eventually, it'll drop the report. It'll, after like 15 minutes or something, it's going to decide, OK, not, none of these are working. I'm just going to go away, uh, just drop the data. So this is an example of, of a report. Um, again, if you can't read it, not a huge deal. Basically, it's a JSON formatted version of a web request log. Uh, it's going to have a, a little bit of extra information, which is uh, here's a sort of general category of reason why the request didn't work. So you know, the, in, this connection, in this case, the connection timed out. right? Um, but it could be you know, the DNS resolution didn't work. Um, but it's just going to be a short string that's sort of a, you know, an enumeration of, of reasons why, why this didn't work. Um, it's important to note the things that these reports don't include, um, which would you know, be very useful. It doesn't, it doesn't do trace routes. Like, the browser's not doing any trace routes. It's not going to include any path information like that. Um, it's not going to tell us which DNS resolver the user is using, which would be really helpful if, if uh, you wanted to detect a DNS problem. Um, it doesn't include anything about RTTs or packet loss or anything like that. Um, if you want that, you have to use other tools. And so what we found is that you know, Nell is really useful for detecting problems initially. Um, that are affecting your service, but you need other tools to sort of help you dig in and figure out what's going on. And we'll see that as we go into, um, into a, a few examples later. And the reason for this is that we, we try to follow a few privacy principles when you're designing Nell. So the first one is that um, Nell is going to only send information that would have gone into the server request log had the request succeeded. Right? The way we think about this is that we're sending, we're, we're collecting the same information as you collected a server request log. We're collecting the same information, but we're just collecting it in a different place. We're collecting on the client instead of on the server. Uh, we're not going to do any sort of active probing. Um, we're not going to generate additional traffic beyond what we need to upload the report. So we can't do things like trace routes, unfortunately. Um, uh, Users of, of, of Nell, the, the web browser user, is going to have control over whether they, they activate Nell or not. Um, and they can go and they have grain control over whether they can either shut it off completely or they can disable it for a certain list of origins that they want. 
And finally, beyond that, you know, if the user allows Nell to be used in their browser, um, it's only the service operator that can activate Nell for an origin. Um, so for example, your ISP can't decide, OK, I'm going to activate Nell for all your web traffic and snoop on you in that way. Like, it's, it's, it's just the service operator that can do that. So I'm now going to go through a few examples um, that we've seen uh, over the past five years we've been, we've been using this at Google. Um, so, so the first one is that um, we had a few years ago, we had a BGP leak happen. Um, so basically, the, the context here is that Google advertises a slash 19 to, to a bunch of our peers. Um, uh, but, and we also advertise a more specific slash 22 to one of our peers. Um, and that peer normally doesn't, doesn't send that information elsewhere. Um, but in this case, they did. Um, they leaked it out. Um, and they leaked that out and it got to a bunch of other, our other peers. And because it's a more specific prefix, traffic got funneled up um, to this, on this other path, um, and it got dropped. So uh, when this happens, uh, on the, this, you know, these leaks happen. Um, and what you, usually the sorts of tools you use to, to look at them are, are things like this. You're going to see a, a sort of control plane, uh, a visualization of the control plane information um, showing you that, like, OK, advertisement shifted from one, one path to another. Um, and, and, and that's usually what you use. Um, Unfortunately, that doesn't really tell you like how big of a problem is this. Like, it might be kind of you might sort of know, but you know, it's it's not going to tell you exactly like how big. Um, and that's that's what Nell is really useful for. This is this is the graph of the same outage that we saw. Um, and each of these lines is an autonomous system that contains clients, uh, users of Google, right? Um, and we can see that at the time of the outage, all, a lot of different autonomous systems are telling us we have a really big problem trying to get to this prefix. And this is what we found it to be most useful for, is providing ground truth about whether users of the service can actually reach, reach the service. Um, so the alternative to this before was like you'd either ask your friends, like, are you having a problem reaching the service, or you'd wait for people to complain about it on Twitter or something like this. This actually gives the ground truth, um, and you can, you can take action on these sorts of problems pretty much immediately. Um, but it's not just for like these huge problems that you read about in the news. Um, you can also use it to detect, we've also used it to detect much smaller things. Um, this is an instance of a single IP address, a single Google IP address, because uh, Google has thousands of IPs, it's just one of them was being black holed uh, in one client ASN in some country halfway across the world that you know, we don't have we don't talk to them normally. <laughs> we don't know them. Uh, it's just one, one autonomous system. And this is something that like, probably would have gone undetected for a really long time if we didn't have um, um, something like Nell to tell us about this. And, and yeah, and this just provides, it provides far better coverage than what we get from any sort of probing service that we could build. So. Um, other things, I, won't, I don't have time to go into more examples, but you can see the paper for more. Um, other things that's useful to detect are things like DNS hijacking, uh, certificate expiration, protocol deployment bugs. You know, when, when Google is rolling out quick, this is useful. Um, uh, testing new, new browser features um, and, and just detecting things like you know, misconfiguration of our, of our load balancers or web servers, things like that. So in the last few minutes, I'll talk about uh, some challenges that we faced, uh, that, that, that we faced, and we think that others will face, uh, potentially face, when they try to use this themselves. Um, so uh, there's a whole laundry list here. I'll go through them. Um, the first three here all kind of have to do with uh, just s scalability, like e ease of actually deploying the collection infrastructure. So. Um, uh, it, it may be difficult, if you're a small web service operator, it may be difficult to procure a, a collector in a different autonomous system than your own um, and, and sort of you know, have, have the failure domains be as uh, uh, dis distinct as possible from your own service. Um, similarly, it may be difficult for you to provision this thing so that it can handle like a burst of, you want, you want this thing to be able to handle bursts of traffic when the network isn't working very well. Um, so that may be difficult for you to do. Um, and, and these problems are all, all would be, helped if, if we could trust a third party to operate these collectors for you. Um, you may not be comfortable doing that um, unless the reports themselves are encrypted. So that's something that in, in, in the future we hope to do um, is, is enable end-to-end -end report encryption. The reports are uploaded over, over HTTPS, but once they get to the collector, the collector can, can read them. Um, but if we, if we had end-to-end -end encryption, that, would, that might help. Um, second of all is the, the high HTTP header overhead. So, 
you may have noticed that like the headers we have to send, they're really big. Um, so, and you have to attach them to every single request or every single response that the server makes. Um, and that's, that's not great, especially since, you know, it's, if you're a, a client and, and you're browsing a website, like every single request is gonna have these, even if you've already got them, like the server's just gonna keep telling you, you need to enable Nell, um, which isn't great. Um, and so there's this thing called origin policy, um, which is in development, which will hopefully help fix this issue. It's basically gonna make it so that you only get this, these Nell policies the first time you access a domain instead of every single time. Um, Chromium is currently the only implementation. Chromium is the, the browser engine behind both uh, Chrome, but also Opera and uh, Microsoft Edge and a few, and a few others. Um, but it would be great if we had like independent implementations. Uh, and in particular, it would be great if, um, if we had more coverage on, on mobile devices. Um, uh, because you know, uh, not not very many uh, mobile devices use. Uh, they have you know separate network stacks. It'd be great if we had that instrumentation there. Uh, and finally, the the reports that that the browsers upload they're actually unauthenticated. So um, and it, it can be a little bit surprising, but um, basically um, the the collectors, they expose uh, an HTTP endpoint, and the browsers just post JSON to them. Um, and there's really no way that we can know for sure that like, the browser actually is reporting about something that actually happened. Um, someone can just make up, you know, oh, I had a problem getting to your service. And you know, they might not have actually tried. Who knows? Um, so, so what we try to do to, to counteract this is that we require that before we take action on any, on any event that we detect um, with Nell is that we require that a large uh, number of client IPs tell us about that problem. Uh, this isn't foolproof. Like you could have a botnet come and just try to completely um, uh, overwhelm you with with bad reports, and, and there's not much we could do. Uh, this this client IP heuristic wouldn't work much there. Um, but we're also hopeful that like techniques that the that you use to detect um, and 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 deal with denial of service attacks might be useful here because the problems are kind of look similar. So we're hope, hoping that in the future that that could be helpful. Uh, so yeah, uh, in this talk I've told you about Nell, um, and you can actually use it today uh, to, to uh, monitor the web network reliability of your web service from users, any user who uses Chrome, this will, this will work by default. Um, and the future work for this is just to enable, uh, improve uh, uh, the, the adoption and usability of Nell. So thank you very much. Questions? Hi, thank you very much for the great talk. Danny Chen from Princeton. So you mentioned that Nell can only be turned on by the, network, uh, by the website owner, but what if, say, the first request get hijacked, so it actually get turned on without the knowledge of the owner? Uh, yeah, if the first request gets hijacked, then, uh, so first of all, one thing to know is this is only for, for TLS traffic. Like, oh, okay, this is great. not HTTP, unencrypted HTTP for, for, okay. for that reason. Good to know. Um, uh, and, and yeah, if, if, if you can't make a first successful request, then yeah, you're not gonna be able to, it's, it's just not gonna work. Um, yeah. yeah. Maybe something of the, rec um, of the topic that you're saying, but can't you see that the outage you explained on um, BGB can be solved with uh, BGB RPKI? instead of like having users? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, Th there are many ways that we can prevent these kinds of outages, but the point is, is that, um, you know, RPKI and things, I mean, they've been around forever, they're still not used widely, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a perennial problem. The point is that Nell will, will allow you to detect these things um, when they inevitably happen. Like, you're um, not gonna prevent things from Yeah, but turning problems. it in the client, I mean, I know you, you raised some security and privacy issue, but I mean, uh, like, this is gonna be collecting a lot of data from all the clients, I mean, which is like, some people have their own concern, which, Sure. Google is always <laughs> collecting data about it, so. Yeah, yeah, and, th and that's, yeah, we, we, we definitely recognize that, that this is, that the browser is collecting more data. That is why we, we have the privacy principles about it's only the service operator that can enable this, and it's only the ser service operator that will learn this information, so. Okay, that this means users are gonna give up to the service operator to start with, so, I mean. It's another thing, so. Yeah, again, the, 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 the principle is that this is information we're sending back is information the service operator would have learned anyway had the request succeeded. So it's that, I, I agree that, 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 that there is a trade-off to me there, but it, it, we really tried to stay on the end of, we're only giving you, we're only giving service operators data that they basically would have known anyway, so. Uh, if this service operator is not on, is on, on Europe, <laughs> I mean, US, yeah, you give up, but when you're in Europe, I mean, you still have your uh, privacy. I mean, service operator were not able to collect this data, but it's another, we can, we can talk about this off the Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's thank the speaker. Thanks.